Hi everyone and welcome. So today we're going to be creating an application using the Google Maps API and the location services. So let's create a new Android Studio project. Okay, let's call it um, location app and then uh, double check this one if it's okay for you and then okay make sure that you also include the support for Kotlin. Next. Okay, that's good because we are targeting 100% of devices. Next. Uh, let's pick up this one, the Google Maps activity. Next. And that will be all. That's correct, correct. And we could click on finish. And now we need to create the key that the API is going to be using to connect to the Google Maps services. So you need this file over here, Google underscore Maps underscore API dot XML, which is located here. Press values. Here it is. Now you need to copy this line and paste it into your browser. Okay, now we can either create a new project or using a project that we previously created. So we're going to create a new one. It's preparing the project. And then it should be initializing the API. It's going to take a while. Spinning, enabling the API. Okay, so we can create the key. and done now you can copy the key and then here in the same file you need to replace this text with your key and done before we proceed with the code i want to show you what the software is supposed to be doing so I've already installed it, and now I need to make sure that it got all the permissions that it needs, which is basically the ability to check for the location of the user. I go here, that's the software. I need to make sure that it got the right permission. It looks like, yes, that's on. So, the aim of this software is to have an alarm going off when the user reach a specific latitude and longitude, um, which are specified by the user, right? So, for example, I want the alarm to go off when I reach latitude 11, longitude 33. Okay. Alarm set. Now, here, when I reach the location, you're going to be seeing a message. So, as this is a piece of software and we can't move it, we need to change the location in here so 11 3, 3. pay attention to this area and then i go send user has reached destination so it worked as expected in here then As you can see, we have a map with a marker. So, for example, you could be using a map to show the location of the user. So, you can be constantly polling for the location and then you can move the marker. So, let's have a look at the code. So we know that the UI of the initial activity consists of uh, a button and a map. So we are here, we go inside the rest, and then we go into the layout. 
and then we will look at the activity underscore maps.xml and in fact we find a fragment which is going to be handling the map and it's connected to the maps activity and a button i'm not going to say much about the button because we've already discussed this object uh, just pay attention to this because we are defining the library that we're using and now let's have a look at the code the file that contains the logic for this activity to grab the logic of this we need to go here and read the maps activity.kt so to use google map you must implement this interface on map ready callback now in the, in the on create we obtain the support map fragment, find fragment by ID. Now we set a callback to the fragment. Callback is triggered when the map is ready to be used, which is asynchronous, right? Create the location manager, check the location permissions, which is what I've done before. I needed to make sure that the application was authorized to download location information from the phone and then enable the location updates, which is when you actually start receiving location information. Now, in the start location update, you need to make sure that you have this permission over here, because otherwise, if you remove this line, uh, you won't even be able to compile the code. So you do need to do it. Now here, location listener receives notification from the location manager when the location has changed. And then when it does change, the on location changed is triggered. So uh, read the values from the shared preferences object. We're gonna talk about this later on is an object which is able to uh, read, which is able to read and write uh, data from an XML file. So is able to uh, store and read information. And we're going to talk about this later on. So we retrieve information from the XML file. So basically, we're retrieving the information that the user uh, store. So basically, the uh, latitude and the longitude of the um, location where the uh, alarm is supposed to go off and then here we are actually retrieving those values and then here if these values are not null we check whether we have actually reached the point where the alarm is supposed to go off right here we are enabling the updates so basically every 10 seconds and every 20 meter. And that's the listener, right? So here, on map ready, when the map is ready, and that's the, the image that you see on the very first activity, when you see the, the marker. So we are setting the latitude and the longitude for the marker. We add the marker to the map, and then we make sure that the marker is visible by moving the camera. So you're gonna have the marker right in the middle of the map. So on click setting button, an intent describe an operation to be performed. It can start activities, send broadcast messages to any component or communicate with background services. In here, the intent is used to trigger another activity, which we are going to be talking about that later on. And then here we start the actual activity. So the last thing I guess that we need to do is check alarm location. which is here, which is basically checking whether we have reached the point where the alarm needs to go off. And that's pretty easy. We are basically rounding 
those numbers and then we are just checking and then if we are supposed to be triggering the alarm we just print something on the screen you could have something else like you could have maybe sms or wherever the user needs to to receive right so i think that will be all for this file To define and manage the second part of the UI, which is where the user is entering the values for the longitude and latitude, which are supposed to be triggering the alarm, then we need to create another uh, activity file. How can we do that? So we are here, right click, new, activity, and then uh, empty activity. And then we can create a, a set things activity right because we need an activity to input some settings right and then oh uh, i already created mine so it won't let me create another one but you will be able to do finish so let's see what we need to do with the activity that we just created the settings activity.kt so we're gonna have a couple of uh, methods write coordinates and read coordinates so the write coordinates is gonna grab a reference of the shared preference object in here and then is going to read the two text box to grab the values that the user has written and then it's going to write the two string inside the object. And then the object is going to write the uh, XML, making these two uh, values permanent. The read is similar. So basically, again, we grab a reference to the shared preference object. And then in here, instead, instead of writing, we are basically reading from the from the XML file, right? And then we are just displaying the values that we just read. Now, as soon as the activity is created, it's going to read the XML to grab the uh, latest values that the um, user has entered. And I think for this file will be all. As we've added another activity file, we also need to modify the manifest, right? Manifest. And we have it in the air, just under the main. So, and here is where you define the newly created activity, the settings activity, make sure that your intent filter is actually correct because otherwise your application won't work. And another thing, if in the emulator you are getting an error, if your application just crashes and you don't know what's going on, and then you analyze the log and you get something similar, then you also need to add uh, this string over here uses library Apache legacy. Okay. So I'm just want to stress that this has to match whatever is in this file over here. in here otherwise you won't be able to call the activity right and i think right now you would have enough information to uh, build your own application i've just shown you the current methodology and now i'm going to show you uh, the deprecated approach that's because there is so much software that has been designed using this library that eventually I think you might easily bump into it. So let's have a look at it. And here, 
we use again on map ready callback but as you can see the list of the interface and classes is much longer so let's see what else we need so we also need google api client dot on connection failed listener which manages scenarios when the connection fails google api client dot connection callbacks which manages connection and disconnection scenarios and also this one the location listener which manages um, the change of location uh, so basically, when the location changes, it receives information from the Fused Location Provider API. So the code is um, much more verbose, as you can see. So again, we need to obtain the support fragment. And then here, we see something new. We need to create the Google API client which we are going to be using to grab the uh, location information. And here, we created the location manager, which provides access to the system location services. And here, we check the location. And then here, we had a few uh, pretty obvious implementation and then we check when the connection is suspended failed and then when it connects so start location updates and then the main entry point for interacting with fused location provider okay and then here, again, we need to, to check this stuff over here, which we have seen before already. And then we set up the listener. The listener called when location is retrieved successfully, right? So if location is not null, you do this. Okay. And then we have start location updates, which we've seen in here. And in here, we need to create the location request only if using request location updates. Right? We didn't see this before, right? We need to check the security again and now as I said before we are using the Google API client to ask for updates location updates and then on location change this part of code is really similar to what we've seen before so um, I hope you've enjoyed this class and uh, if you have any questions, just, you know, drop a comment, no problem. Uh, please subscribe, uh, like it only if you really like my video. And uh, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.